Hello everyone, it is Susan here from Susan Hiles Art. Welcome to my Monday crafty chit chat and slow stitching video. My favorite video of the week to make. <laughs> um, so today, oh my gosh, um, I was so happy last Monday ending the video with this concept right here and some of you have chimed in and agreed with me that you like this whole vertical look and i'm loving it some of you even mentioned that you really liked the bronze and or the silver um uh beads well they're metal i guess they're still beads i don't know they're metal pieces and um yeah so i have i i know exactly what i'm going to do on this page so this is what we're going to work on but before we do that there i have a subscriber her name is marie middleton and she had mentioned to me that when she needs to look at a stitch that she looks at mary corbett's videos. I'll put a link to Mary Corbett below. She hasn't even posted anything in five years, but I mean, it's still what it's perfect because you can go to her channel and in the search, you know, you can type in what stitch you're looking for or just scroll through and, you know, in just a few minutes and for each video, she shares how to do the stitch and she explains it. And so that's very, very, very helpful to me, being a visual type person. And um, yeah, so between watching her, listening to her, and doing it with her, things are making more sense, not 100%, <laughs> but I have to tell you, I finally get the feather stitch. <laughs> and it's all visual. It's like now ingrained in my head because of the way that she taught it. So this is not my teaching. This is Mary Corbett's, but I'm gonna show you what, what she taught in her video, what she did. And I'm just gonna use a dark pen just because then you can really see the line good. Um, you know, and I don't think that these are going to be perfect by any means, but you'll get, oh yeah, no, that's definitely not perfect, but that's okay. So we're going to roll with it anyway. Okay. So what she did was like this visual with three lines was just, it, that's what did it for me, honestly, because now it makes sense. Because remember I said with the feather stitch, like I just... Like I could start, like I could watch somebody do it and, and it would make perfect sense. But then when I would go to do it, I would freeze because I wouldn't know the next step to do. It just went totally out of my head. Well, now I, I can do it because all I have to do is envision three lines. That's all I have to do. They don't have to be there. Um, but what you do is you go up the, the one line in the middle, so that's your first stitch. And then what you'll do is you have to make sure that the thread is below the needle and you're gonna go to the other line. And, well, this is really far from here. You know what, I'm gonna put, let me put a line that's a little bit closer just because it's gonna look better. So I'm just gonna do that. So you'll have to ignore <laughs> that, first, that first line that I put there. Make believe this is not here. <laughs> okay, all right, so now what you do is again, you make sure the thread is below the needle. You're gonna go here and then come up on the line. Then the next one, see? So that's like perfect. So then the next time, again, making sure that the line is below the needle, you're gonna go to the other line on the other side, uh, 
parallel to to where you went in here and I, I don't know that it has to be parallel but that's the way you know she did it and then you go back to the middle line and then you just keep doing that so see there's the feather stitch so you're gonna go back to the line on the other side to the middle line pull to the other side to the middle to the middle oops oopsie daisy oopsie daisy come on and pull so that's it so that's and i've done it i've i've done this stitch now let me i'll show you um where i did it but then you go back to the middle and it's definitely easier for me to do on the right side than the left side but that's it that is the feather stitch so having this three um these three lines even oops even envisioned in my head it works it just it's perfect so like i did it and let me show you and how beautiful this came out so this is on my roxy journal of stitchery volume three and i'm folding it up right now because i don't want you to see the whole thing because i have the video coming out on wednesday two days from from when this video is out and so this was the first feather stitching that i did i want to say on my own <laughs> i feel like such a big a big girl so grown up right but i was able to do this feather stitching and then i added the the uh, french knots for the flowers but i was just so i'm just like i don't know i feel like it's christmas morning because i just feel like i don't know like it just makes sense to me now it clicks it clicks in my head um if you want to say it that way and yeah so thank you marie for suggest suggesting mary corbett's channel because uh, there's so many of her videos i save them into my into my saved playlist that i have and yeah i'm just it just made sense so thank you thank you so much for suggesting that all right so now let's go ahead and let's work on this i know that i want to put that there i think what i'll do is i'll just go ahead and throw a pin in here so that it doesn't move around a lot and we are going to use this thread that i got from a kit from um, a thrift shop and all i want to do is stitch down on both sides of this loop right here and i picked this lighter color thread because i don't know i think it looks pretty right it's a contrast and yeah so a lot of what i do you know and if you're stitchers you can let me know um when you stitch and i know it can vary but do you um do things do you i don't know use certain colors or whatever to really make things stand out or are you more of someone that likes things to be more neutral and again i guess it depends what you're working on right um but I kind of like my philosophy is this with stitching and it just is and it always has been with stitching. Now I've only been stitching. Well, I started stitching in September of 2021. So just, you know, not even a year and a half yet. So I'm new to this whole thing. But one thing that I have learned about myself and and 
and stitching is that if I'm gonna stitch, if I'm gonna take the time to stitch, because sometimes it can take a long time. So like even this, this three page just because book that you know I was gonna make in you know a couple videos. <laughs> We are now how many videos in? <laughs> you know, it it, it kind of grows. You know, it, it, for me it does with with the with the stitching. It, it kind of grows, and um, as far as the amount of work, right? Um, and I figure if I'm going to put in all that time and energy, that well, I want to really be able to see it right i don't want to i don't necessarily want to sew everything just like i did with this i mean this kind of proves my point um is i could have done um a darker thread with this zigzag couching and and i didn't because if i'm gonna take the time to stitch I want to see it now is that all the time no it's 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 not but I think as a general rule for myself you know I want to see it that's like I do that's one reason why I make a lot of wall hangings with my stitching projects and um and the journals that I, I make, like I have them out. They're right next to me on a table. And the reason I do that is because I want to see them. I want to be able to look at them. I don't want to want to hide them away. And of course, if they're hanging on a wall, I'm going to, to get to see them. So that's why I hang a lot of my stitched projects on my walls. And I am fortunate where I have a room that I can do that. And I have a lot of wall space, everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's a lot we can make and put up on these walls. And, and not because the room is big, just because I have this, it's just, I've never put anything, right? So little by little, I'm filling in all of the spots on my, on my walls. So, yeah, so like, I'm liking that. I think that that is looking just like I want it to. I'm just doing the one stitch over each side of the loop and I think that that would be good um what I would like well you know I don't know I was just gonna say what I would like to do is get some smaller beads but I have some really teeny tiny beads that I bought a long time ago and I don't use them I put them away um you know I know I told you guys the the beads that I have are from a friend that makes jewelry and that is true and those are the ones that I use. And the reason why, and I kind of alluded to this last Monday, is because I just don't know enough about beads. Like, so I bought, I don't know, probably a year ago, at least, um, probably when I found Susan Taylor Brown, who is the, um, the creator of the three page just because book that we're working on right now and i'll have her link below so you can go check out her videos and um probably when i started um following susan and because she does a lot with beads and i ordered some beads online but again, not knowing anything about them, like as far as their like size and all of that, and it's like it's in centimeters and I don't know. And so I got some beads. They're, they're so small that I, I just looked at them and I put them away when I got them because I don't even know what to do with them. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, at least now, since then, 
I have learned that there are needles to use for beads, right? Um, like I didn't know that. So, but it makes perfect sense to me now. Um, and I have one, I think I've shown you guys before. I have one needle, here it is, that, you know, I guess people that do jewelry use these all the time, but the needle is so fine and the, the eye of the needle is the same circumference um, around as the whole needle is. So it'll fit through a, the hole of a bead that has a very, very, very fine or, or small, narrow hole in it. But I can, it's near impossible for me to thread this so I don't really use it. I have used it, but it is not something that I go to because it's difficult for me. Um, so I have a, a huge bag, a good size bag of beads that they just, they've been sitting in my closet for a year. Um, yeah, so, so that's a shame. So I would like to maybe I don't know. I, I don't think I have a way around that. I think you just really have to use the smaller needle. If you guys know of a, I don't know, some tips or tricks around using beads with, with the needles and everything, let me know because I don't know. I, it bothers me that they sit there doing nothing, but yeah. And so I guess the moral to the story with the beads is and I've bought none, none, uh, besides those a year ago, none. Uh, but what I do know is that um, I, I wouldn't buy any online anymore because I just don't have the knowledge of anything about them to know even what to buy, so yeah so that's the scoop on the beads and i don't know how i got to that <laughs> but next we're gonna work on the white rosettes i like the white i like the contrast now but we do have to look in here so this i know this is going to be close but there's not a lot i can do about that so this is the sewing box that i have the stuff in for the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. And here are more of the white. In fact, what might be nice is, is that the right length? It might even be the right length. Let's see. Yeah, it's close enough. We're gonna just go ahead and use that. Now on something like that, I will use, oops, I will use, Oops, I have all this stuff. I put it away. A lighter color thread. I could, you know, do something extreme and, you know, do something with color. Not that it would have to be extreme. Like I do have this yarn right here, this blue that is on a needle. It's this blue right here that we used on the beads on the other page. And it would work because it's long enough. And all I'm gonna do is a stitch in the middle. Like I don't even think, like what you could do, I guess if I could spit out my words, <laughs> is I could and I have in the past with these flowers done a French knot in the middle of each one. But do I want to do that? I mean, I could put a bead in the middle of each one. I could. I could. Um, I still have these blue beads here. I could do that. Do I have enough of them here? Oh, I think I do. I have just enough. I kind of like that. What do you guys think? 
I think we're gonna do it. Why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, good. <laughs> so the one thing that I've really noticed about this particular page is that there's not a lot of planning going on. <laughs> it just kind of is coming together. Just talking with you guys and talking it out and, you know, looking at a couple different options. I mean, we're coming up with with things that I didn't intend to do, and I'm liking that a lot. So I'm just going to go up, and we're going to do this easy peasy. I'm going to try to get it to sit in the middle of the rosette, but I don't know how successful that's going to be. So I'm not going to worry about it too, too much. And... Yeah, oh, that looks cute, right? Just enough. Just enough. I think I will go ahead and do... Um, two times through the bead. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's do that. I don't want to, again, make it too difficult. But, all right, yeah, I think that's going to be cute. What else is going on? Oh, let me tell you. So, well, let me give you an update on my parents because a lot of you have asked or, you know, you, you say that you're praying for them and you know that I just, I think that's, just the most wonderful thing ever so thank you all for for asking about them and yeah so I appreciate that very much so my parents are doing extremely well they you know my father's been out of rehab for the PT and the OT for a few weeks now and I don't know, three weeks? I don't know, something like that. And so he's been back at assisted living with my mom. And he's so stubborn. <laughs> Can I just say how stubborn he is? And it's funny because, you know, he calls me stubborn. And I think he's stubborn. And I think my mother is stubborn. <laughs> So I guess we're just like a stubborn kind of family. I don't know that my brothers are very stubborn, but uh, I have two older brothers. One lives in Delaware and one lives in Georgia. And um, yeah, I can't say that they are necessarily stubborn, but my parents and I are stubborn for sure. And so, you know, part of me getting him out of rehab sooner than they wanted was that, you know, we agreed, we all agreed, my father, my mother, me, um, even the, um, you know, I had the uh, director of nursing go and see him in rehab, the, the director from, from assisted living and just to make sure, you know, that I wasn't, you know, that I was on track because, you know, obviously my father wanted to be out of there and I wanted him out of there. And um, so anyway, so the director of nursing went to see my father in uh, rehab and said, absolutely, he can definitely go back to assisted living because they have they have PT and OT right there in in the community. And so that was the plan that yes, we we were going to get him out of there and because we knew he could do the therapy at assisted living. 
Well, then, so now he's back at assisted living, right? Then it's a few days in, a couple days in, you know, they're waiting for the script or the something, oh, something, uh, something with insurance they were waiting for. And so it was a few days before he actually started the PT at assisted living. And during those few days, my mother would tell me <laughs> without my father hearing that, what am I doing here? Um, that, you know, like if somebody asked him, what the heck is going on here? There we go. Um, if somebody asked him, and this did happen, you know, if he was going to take PT, he would say no. And I told my mother and my brothers that, well, he has to, because that was the plan. He has to. There's there's, there's, it's like not up for discussion. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was, you know, he never, not once, not once did he say to me, what did I do here? You know, I obviously cannot talk and stitch at the same time because I have no idea what I'm doing with, <laughs> with the speed. Um, but, he never once said to me that he wasn't going to to take PT at assisted living and um, and and he did it he did do it he is doing it so he is taking PT and OT uh, I think it's is it th four four days a week I think it's more than three days um, it's not five so it must be four and yeah so i know he's hating every second second of it i know it i know that i don't blame him who wants to do pt right it's not a lot of fun and but he is doing it so i'm giving him credit for that and he's he's you know i mean he's 90 years old he has a traumatic brain injury from falling on ice. When he fell on the ice in, in 2016, so I'll tell you that story. I, I um, it changed all of our lives, our whole family, our even our extended family, like our cousins and stuff like that. It just changed, it changed. There just so much changed, even with friends and everything. Because what had happened was he was walking my mother out to the car in the morning and he knew that there was some black ice on the driveway and he knew it and he didn't put salt down and he he was holding my mother up so she would not fall right taking her around the car and in their driveway and he, he slipped on the black ice and landed. I don't know how he did it. He, he totally flipped backwards and landed on the, uh, like on the back, but the top of his head. Um, don't know how the heck that even happened, but he was out and um, there was blood on the driveway and the whole thing. And my mother called the ambulance and she's calling me and my cousin who is on the, um, he has a plectron because he's a fireman. You know, he, he ended, he actually got there before me. And, um, so the ambulance was already gone when, when, um, when I got to their house, which I, it was well the house is still there but they're not in the in it anymore of course uh it's like four miles from my house doesn't that look pretty and so by the time you know she kept calling and calling and i don't know i was probably getting ready for work because i was i was home and um and so she gets through to me and you know she's in basically hysterics and you know so i go over there and um 
Yeah, so I get her and we head to the hospital. And, you know, he goes into the emergency room and, um, you know, so they're checking him out. And then, you know, they're like, you know, can you move your, your, your toes? And his, his right foot was fine, but his left foot, he, he, he wasn't feeling it when the doctor would touch it and he wasn't able to move it. So as it turns out, it, it ended up where, I mean, he didn't have a stroke, but it, he had, it's almost like it affected the left side of his body, like similar to what uh, would happen with a stroke victim. And um, so, you know, as soon as he couldn't move his, his foot and he wasn't able to feel it, then he, he was immediately moved to trauma. So now he's in the trauma section. And this was, in two, <clears throat> excuse me, in 2016. And yeah, so... So he has a traumatic brain injury, which means that he has bleeding on the brain and he still does. And, you know, I mean, it's not, it do, it's not getting any worse or anything at this point, but yeah, so it never, you know, it, it's, it's just there, it is what it is and so from that point on, over the years, he just got continually worse as far as his mobility. And because he like he used to be able to walk with a cane and he hasn't been able to do that. Well, since since he fell on Labor Day night, so that is um, early September and in uh, that one was that. That was in 2020. So September of 2020. So if you think about the world in September of 2020, um, yeah, so he fell coming out of the bathroom at night and because he didn't lift his foot up high enough to, because it went from tile floor to carpeting. And he... Um, and he fell. So, you know, obviously my mother called me and and also the neighbors across the street. So these guys, they they went, went right over to my parents' house, but they were not going to touch my father. They And I don't blame them. Um, I, I wasn't either because he was flat out on the floor. He was awake. He was, you know, telling me he wants to die, which was a whole lot of fun. And um, so obviously the ambulance was called and they helped him up. It took two of them to even get him into a stretcher. And um, yeah, so right from that point, is when you know when he went home because he again had to after being in the hospital he went to rehab i mean this was a several month thing it was he got out of rehab at that point in april and it happened in february so february early february so february march so february march so almost three months um, back in 2000 and, and, oh no, 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 I'm getting confused. That was the first time that was in 2016. Um, but in 2020, he went to the hospital. I think he was there for a week and then had to go to rehab. And when he got out of rehab and went home at that point, he needed 24 seven care. And um, unlike before, it wasn't like that before. Before that, in September of 2020, 
he the only care that he had gotten was for showers but once he felt that time coming out of the bathroom um it all changed again and he needed full-time care there was just one week one week of me and my mother taking care of him and he's the kind of guy that will get up multiple times at night and you know have to use the bathroom and it was we were so exhausted the second week uh, my brother and sister-in-law came up from Delaware now this is at a time where you know where you would have to go in quarantine sometimes depending on the state where you're coming from um, you know it was all during all of this but they came up and you know they didn't go anywhere they just stayed right in in my parents house but after they took care of my father for a few days um yeah it became very obvious obvious that the family could no longer do it and therefore that's how they ended up in assisted living um and that was october 4th so I, it wasn't even a month after he fell um onto the carpet um it wasn't even a month that they were in assisted living they were moved in they were in and then i had to go through the process of getting their house sold and getting everything it was just it was so you know i don't know why am i talking about all this i don't know i just kind of i hope it's okay <laughs> i'm talking about all this i got chatting about it and it just kind of i don't know so you know i think the moral of the story is that if you think that there's a chance of having ice outside, please be careful. Just, you know, like if I think that there's ice outside, I am going to um, like shimmy my feet, like not walk, not lift them up, just kind of shimmy across the driveway. Like the first thing I'll do is go outside from my basement downstairs. The second thing is I make sure that I shimmy on my driveway and not, and not, um, and not walk because, you know, I don't want, I don't want to fall and I don't want anybody else to fall because falling on ice on a driveway is not a good thing. So... That's the moral to that story, and so, I gosh, all right, well, we kind of went around the bush on that one, but, but that's, oh, okay, now I remember why, because we were talking about PT and, and my father's mobility, um, so he, at this point, is, yeah, he's not even allowed to, and because I say so, he's not allowed to get up from a chair or his bed by himself so that is like the number one rule that i told him when he went back from pt to assisted living is do not get up on your own i mean he wears a pendant so does my mother around her neck that they buzz so every time he has to go to the bathroom or if he has to you know go down to the dining room to eat or Whatever the case may be, he presses the pendant. You know, all the aides know him really well. Everybody gets along. It's it's all good. But and he he'll use a walker. So from his chair, he has a chair that the seat goes up. It's a electric, and so it goes up, and that helps him to stand. But he does it with a walker. He's not going to, and he's been like that for a long time. He's not going to just stand. He needs his walker to stand up on. And then they will help him maneuver over to his wheelchair. And then sometimes, maybe once a day, maybe not even that often, he'll 
walk with his walker down to the dining room and it's a fairly good distance and um but like they'll he'll be on his using his walker to, walker to get down there but they're behind him with his wheelchair the whole time so if he gets tired or if he's gonna fall or whatever you know his wheelchair is right there and then he sits in his wheelchair always always and has for many many years even at home uh, he would sit in his wheelchair at the table to eat so um, so then you know, I, and I made him repeat the words to me when I brought him back the day that I brought him. Well, I didn't bring him. We had to call for a ride, you know, a van to get him back to assisted living. And, and so we were there. And before I left, everybody was exhausted. So I, I wasn't going to hang out long at all. I just wanted to you know get him settled in there this is tricky because of the the big holes in this in this burlap piece i have to somehow do this oops let me undo that um to where the thread will stay oh yeah so i just made like a knot <laughs> Well, since I have a knot there, I'm going to take advantage of it. I can't really. I'm just. Oh, gosh. All right. Here goes. I'm just going to do this. Um, oh, and so I told him that day that he cannot get up by himself from the chair into with the walker, I said, no, you, you absolute. And I made him repeat it after me because I just know him. <laughs> and sure enough, a couple days being home, he was getting out of bed early in the morning because he had to go to the bathroom. And he, he says now that he thought he could do it. Well, he fell. And it was, you can't lift him because he's just dead weight. And so the, the, I forget if it was two or three aides my mother was telling me, they could not get him up. They ended up calling the police so that the police could help. And they finally got him up. So this was a few days after coming back from, from, I just, I have to giggle because he's just so stubborn. Um, coming back from assisted living and yeah, and doing exactly what I told him not to do because I knew it wasn't going to end up good. And because I told him, I said, you're not as strong as you were, um, before he got COVID, you know, he, he just isn't. It's like every time something happens to him he gets weaker and even a year and a half ago he got uti a urinary tract infection and ended up in the hospital and physical and into rehab after that for physical therapy and you know and so every single time that he goes through this he um gets weaker and so i knew he was weaker but see he doesn't see that he doesn't see that so so i i get it i get why he thought in his head that he could get up by himself you know at five in the morning to go to the bathroom but he fell and yeah so but thank god you know i told him i said you could have ended right back up into the, the rehab place, he could have ended up right back there, right then and there. I said, you realize that, right? And, you know, so hopefully he won't do that anymore. Hopefully he gets it now. So he's stubborn, I'm stubborn, my mother's stubborn. <laughs> so it makes for some interesting stuff, let me tell you. That's for sure. 
Well, now that I've talked your ears off, so the moral to that whole story is that he's fine. <laughs> he doesn't seem to have residual effects from COVID, either does my mother. Um, unlike me, who still has the cough, um, every day I have the cough, and sometimes all day long I do nothing but cough the entire day. And even when I make videos, I cough a lot, except that I edit it out so you don't hear it. Um, but yeah, so, and sometimes I still can't taste things. Sometimes I can, and sometimes I can't. So I don't know what that's all about, but, but anyway, so that's the scoop on the family. That's, so my parents are great, and thank you so much for asking, and I have no idea how long I just chatted, but yeah, okay, so it's way over the 30 minutes that I like to, to keep these videos at, but hey, we got this done. Look at this. Oh my gosh, do you love it? I love it. How awesome. How awesome. All right. So I'm going to end this video because I went way, way, way over. Um, thank you so much for listening to my chit chat today. So I will see you all, well, on Wednesday. Come and check out my uh, Roxy Journal of Stitchery video. Uh, I, I did my wildflowers on the snippet roll, so I'm going to share that. And then on Friday is the open collaboration where I'm making a junk journal and anybody's welcome to join in that if you would like to and um that's it so thank you so much for being here I'll see you next Monday and we'll work on another page because this is done we did it we did it I'd love it I love it so much so that's it. Thank you for being here. God bless. Bye-bye.